Days are behind it. Darlington's year in the wilderness ended at Welling in May when the silverware marked a well-deserved return to league football for the Quakers. But the big question is, can they repeat the winning form? Basically, we know what we want to do. We, we've had success doing something and we'll try and do the same again. Uh, it is a higher league, a harder league. Um, but we're raring to go, very keen, full of confidence. And if we can get a couple of good wins under our belt, I think we can go from strength to strength. Little's already strengthened his squad, bringing in Michael Trotter from Middlesbrough and then Mick Tate from Reading. He hopes the blend of youth and experience will do the trick this weekend. Yeah, realistically, we would have preferred to have played Gillingham up at home. Um, uh, they have home advantage. It's a long way for us to go, but uh, with the spirit is amongst our lads there. Uh, we're very keen, looking forward to it. And uh, a difficult game, but we're going to give it everything we've got. Hartley Pool, Cyril Knowles saved United from replacing Darlington. But harder still, further down the league. Of course, four go for the North East in this 46-game marathon, now that Darlington are once again back in the Football League fold. The Quakers definitely looked as though they were in a different league when the pace of Gillingham's Peter Heritage put keeper Mark Crudder to the test early on. He was equal to it and excelled again when a gaping defence allowed a close-range effort from Alan Walker at the far post. But Crudder proved he was human when he failed to collect this corner nine minutes after the break, leaving Les McJanet to deputise on the line with an outstretched arm. Welsh international Steve Lovell sends the big man the wrong way and gives the home side a well-deserved lead. But then came the fireworks. Gillingham's Tim O'Shea had already been stretched off with knee trouble before Darlington substitute Steve Mardenborough tangled with Billy Manuel. There was a clash of heads and then as play was stopped, a free-for-all broke out. The end result, a red card for Mardenborough who was in, then out of the game before he knew it. He was closely followed by a slightly upset Manuel. But it didn't stop there. A 50-50 ball meant feet were flying between Frank Gray and Mark O'Connor as the battle continued. It was soon obvious who'd come off the worst. But Darlington still got the free kick. Brian Little's men almost lifted the gloom and made it a grey day when coach Frank nearly practised what he preached. But it wasn't to be a happy return. welcomed back league football to Feetham's, but were still looking for their first goal of the season. They were queuing up for a seat outside the ground as well as inside as Brian Little's men tried to get their first league points in more than 15 months. A dubious start at Gillingham last week hadn't exactly given them a great deal of confidence going into this clash with Burnley. And it showed early on as veteran Ron Futcher gets in behind the defence to put Mark Crudder to the test. But perhaps all they needed was a little bit of luck. And they got it as John Borthwick fell over in the area. There was a pregnant pause before the striker and the crowd realised that the referee had pointed to the spot. And he wasn't about to change his mind. It took Frank Gray more than 40 matches to open his account last season, but no such problems this time around. The Quakers were never going to have it all their own way. Ian Bray hoists this ball into the middle, and when it's eventually knocked back in, it's that man, Futcher again, whose neat flick levels the game. But with only a couple of minutes left to the break, it was a midfield battle in the true sense of the word that set up Darlington second. Gary Gill gets the foot in the chest, and then the magic sponge. Surely he'd take it easy until half-time. Well, no such luck for the men from Turf Moor. When the keeper's punch only reaches the edge of the area, Gill's recovered to smash the half-volley home. After the interval, it was more of the same. Constant pressure from David Cork sets up right back Les McJanet for another cracker. That was just the two-goal cushion they were looking for. But still time to panic at the other end, as Futcher once more gets Prudder scrambling to clear his lines. But the three points are safe. Well, I'm almost certain last time Darlington were in the league, it was end of February, March, before they won a home game, and, and that was probably the main reason for them going out of the Football League. Uh, it's nice to play your first game at home uh, and to win it, and uh, we're chuffed a bit. First Football League points for more than a year when John Borthwick went down in the area after a Burnley barge giving them a penalty. Coach Gray shows the lads just how it should be done. 
But another veteran wasn't going to let Frank take all the glory. Ron Futcher's eye for goal has never wavered over the years, and he finds the top corner yet again. Brian Little was off the bench and preparing the half-time pep talk when Gary Gill made his task a little easier with this belter from the edge of the box. But he was left arguing the toss with right-back Les McJanet about who scored the Feetham's goal of the day. Hartlepool's dominance in the first... Three points after taking complete command at Walsall, Les McJanet was at the heart of the move that saw Frank Gray sweep the Quakers into a 13th-minute lead. Seven minutes later, Gary Gill started and finished a cracking goal. Andy Toman and John Borthwick kept the ball moving sweetly for the former Middlesbrough man to complete the job in style. But Walsall fought back in search of their first win at their new four and a half million pound stadium. Darlington couldn't get the corner away. Stuart Rimmer from the closest range possible. The conference champions had some justification in feeling hard done by when Mick Tate was judged to have handled before cracking in what would have been number three. But the referee was having none of it. Eight minutes from time, and Walsall salvaged a point. Poor defending all round, and Adrian Littlejohn deprives Darlington of their first away win. The midfield, then Darlington's opener, had the full-back look about it. Les McJanet can't find a way through, but Frank Gray can. Just seven minutes later, it's Gary Gill who starts and finishes the Quakers' second with the help of Borthwick and Toman. Enough to seal the game, you may think. Well, not likely. The defence is all over the place as Stuart Rimmer hits home from close range. Then, with just eight minutes on the clock, Walsall picked up the point as Kevin Smith and McJanet allow Adrian Littlejohn the space to head the equaliser. Scarborough were only five minutes into that. Football League, remember, they lost heavily on the opening day at Gillingham. one nil the scoreline, but plenty of action there. Since then, they've not looked back. Featham's fans getting value again. Now, it can be a dog's life when you're a football supporter and your team's down in the depths of the fourth division. But lowly Halifax almost took the lead when Tony Fife hurled himself at Paul Fleming's cross, only to see his shot go over. For Darlington, John Borthwick squandered a hat-trick of chances before the Quakers went ahead just on half-time. A terrier-like fullback Les McJanet crossed, and the ball fell to David Cork. He made room for the volley, and Darlington were in front. After the break, McJanet growled again. Bulldog determination here as he battled on until he'd worked the chance to shoot. Cool thinking too, perfect shot. That's two cracking goals this season for McJanet. Darlington wasted a two-goal lead last week. Yesterday, the crossbar kept out Paul Futcher's effort. Now, who gets sicker, dogs or parrots? Then Darlington sealed the match with a move which bore the pedigree of a Cruft Supreme Champion. Halifax torn apart, and when Paul Emson's shot rebounded off the keeper, Gary Gill was there to shepherd the ball home. Rough on Halifax, but Darlington's tails are up now. Just managed to make it a happy half-time break at Feetham's. The celebration drinks were on ice until Cork popped up to volley the first well and truly home. Les McJanet could be angling for a change in position, but he'll be happy to stay at the back if they keep flying in like this. That's two belters in three games. Then a perfect build-up is given that timely nudge by the keeper. It falls into the path of Gill, who makes it a long trip home for the Halifax fans. Down at the seaside, it was a bustling run by O'Gon. Five minutes, then last night would have been extremely successful for the region. Unfortunately, though... The first steps in recovering from the shock of the David Longhurst tragedy, and they got back into action at Darlington. City are still looking for their first goal of the season, but managed to hold out against a confident Quakers side for a goalless draw. And it's now to Darlington turned into a night of absolute disaster. Two minutes before half-time, new signing Dave Bennett was sent crashing to the ground after a tackle from behind by Gary Gill. It was one of those gruesome moments when everyone knows it's bad. Gill was booked for the challenge. But the Sunderland skipper's brother was carried off with a double fracture of the leg in only his second game for the club. Five minutes after the break, Darlington got the lead they threatened. Gill's cross smartly converted by David Cork. 
Ozzy Ardila's men are on the slide with the fourth division team full of confidence. 13 minutes later, Quakers found the net twice but just got the one goal for it. Cork again the tormentor and the referee awards the penalty as the ball rolls into the goal. It was only a momentary delay. Coach Frank Gray's trusty left foot is as good as ever. Four minutes from time, the Quakers added a third demoralising goal. Swindon brought it on themselves, presenting the ball to Cork, who turned and wrapped up a commanding 3-0 lead for the second leg. Well, Brian Little's men able to go where Sunderland couldn't, through the Swindon defence. And the Roker men struggled last night against Bristol City. Doncaster were caught. Yesterday, Rovers took another northeast tumble. Darlington tripped them up this time. Darlington aren't afraid of anyone these days, so a visit to pace setters Doncaster didn't pose too many problems. Keeper Mark Prudder, though, did well to get down to this early effort from Mark Rankin. But once David Cork latched onto a through ball on the halfway line, there was no stopping him. A tremendous solo effort on his return to his hometown gave the Quakers that vital goal. Brian Nittles' defence stood up well to the pressure, but when John Stiles breaks through the middle, it takes another fine save and the acrobatics of Prudder to clear the danger once and for all. So Darlington unchanged for eight games and unbeaten for nine are charging up the table. They're lying fifth with 12 points, just three behind early leaders Torquay and Doncaster. Chance in midweek to move into second spot, but yesterday they were obviously determined to make amends against Hereford United. The Quakers paraded on loan new boy Mark Burke and the Borough winger set up the first real chance only for John Borthwick's shot to scrape the wrong side of the post. Hereford gave as good as they got in the first half. Paul Tester runs free down the left and the Tester shot had Mark Crudder at full stretch. After the break, however, Hereford's former Arsenal and Scottish goalkeeper George Wood was in for a testing time. He was equal to substitute Mardenborough's power pack, but he failed his exam in a torrid 12 minutes. With a little help from Borthwick, David Cork rattled in the first under Wood's body. That's his fifth of the season. Nine minutes later, Mardenborough went goal hunting again. The big Scot stopped this one as well, but couldn't hold on. Up popped Burke, and that's 2-0. Mark my words, that's one way to impress the boss and make friends with the fans. The third, three minutes later, was really quite remarkable. Pruder's free kick found at least four Darlington players looking miles offside, but the referee said Michael Trotter's header counted. As a contest, the match was all over, except for the small matter of a John Narbutt consolation goal for Hereford. Good one it was, too. So, despite the midweek hiccup, Darlington lie in fifth place among a clutch of clubs chasing the leaders, Torquay United. Now, Brian Little's men go down to Swindon on Tuesday in the Rumbelows Cup to defend their three-goal lead. When the wind beat them, but in a dazzling dozen minutes, they destroyed Hereford. First, David Cork lets fly from just inside the box. Then, Steve Mardenborough has a crack from further out. When George Wood fumbles, Mark Burke gets the chance for a dream debut goal. Then came another bizarre one. I'm not sure they understand the new offside law down there, but only fools and horses would have allowed Trotter's header to stand. Time for a consolation goal for Hereford. And if you're only going to get one, it might have been about how much damage had been caused to their team's morale by that crushing cup defeat at Swindon. Judging by their performance at Blackpool, none at all. The Quakers had already knocked Blackpool out of the Rumbelows Cup on away goals and within 13 minutes they looked on their way again. John Borthwick inch perfect with his header. But Darlington weren't to find the rest of the day playing sailing. They needed a sensational save from Mark Prudder. Phil Stank dives in but the Darlington keeper airborne as well. And then he regains his bearings to smother any follow-up. After an hour it looked to be all up for Blackpool. Defender Gary Briggs misses the ball but not Andy Toman. Number eight, poleaxed. Anxious looks from the bench, but it's Briggs who has to go off, the third Blackpool man to see a red card in the last four games. A man short, but it didn't stop the home side staging a surprise recovery. Six minutes later, they were level, Andy Garner firing in the equaliser. 
Darlington left it till four minutes from times to make their superiority finally count. A fine header from Gary Gill, ecstatically greeted by an impressive travelling army. Wrexham almost got off to a flying start with the acrobatics of Gary Worthington, the former Darlington striker, only being foiled by the bar. Then an already happy blood. Determined to prove that dropping out of the Football League doesn't have to be the end of life as we know it. In fact, one season in the conference seems to have left the Quakers stronger than ever. Yesterday, Brian Little's team climbed to second in the table, thanks to battling all the way at Maidstone. Darlington were looking for their third away win in a row when Maidstone's Mark Gall, back for his first game after six weeks on the injured list, caught them on the hop after just nine minutes. The Quakers didn't get back into the match until skipper Kevin Smith broke out of defence five minutes after half-time. He slots it through to David Cork, who jinks inside and hammers home his sixth of the season. But they went behind to a well-worked blockbuster. They must have thought it was their own high noon when Gary Cooper collects it on the far side of the box and pulls the ball back for Steve Butler to thunder in a volley from the penalty spot. Then came Brian Little's favourite dead ball move, Andy Toman's free kick, glanced in by John Borthwick. Worked last week, so why not use it again? Perhaps Gary Gill was trying to follow in John Hendry's footsteps when he got the ball outside his own area with only three minutes to go. But he decides instead to lay it off to Steve Mardenborough, who prods it into the middle for Toman to slide in for all three points. It was a top-of-the-table clash at Feetham's as Darlington took on Northampton Town. 13 minutes gone and it's unlucky for Terry Angus who takes out John Borthwick just inside the area. A penalty, yes, but a professional foul? Well, the referee thought so and Angus was given the red card and sent off. The Quakers coach, Frank Gray, scores his fourth of the season and the third from the spot. The town's ten men were not to be outdone. And seven minutes after the break, Barnes, as in the Bobby variety, gets the ball wide on the right. He's given the standoff treatment and makes the most of it to get the equaliser. One all at the final whistle. Yeah! Across of the Victoria ground, Cyril... Two defeats, a draw, and only Hartlepool managing to collect a maximum return of points. He's turned up at Beatums and almost sold Darlington go behind to a Tony Dawes shot. Mark Burke is still trying to impress, but Scunthorpe keeper Paul Musselwhite was equal to his shot. Mid-table Scunthorpe still threatened, with Mark Prudder having to backpedal to keep out Andy Flanders' effort. But in a scrappy second half, Andy Toman's header from Burke's cross was the highlight. Sadly, the match ended goalless. Against local clubs, with Darlington holding their own at Rochdale in the division's game of the day. It was third against second at Spotland as both Darlington and Rochdale tried to make up ground on Torquay. 29 minutes gone and coach Frank Gray mistimes his challenge and leaves the Quakers one short at the back. Steve Ashauna sees the man over and he trundles it past Mark Crudder. It looked as though the journey across the Pennines had taken its toll until the luck of the Irish rebounded on Rochdale. Crudder's long belt downfield is headed on by Keith Welsh and O'Shaughnessy's first time lob catches out the keeper but delights one visitor to the paddock. And Darlington might have just stolen all three points before the end. Steve Martinborough finds Paul Emson, and he's only denied by Nicky Holmes on the line. Third against second at Spotland as both Darlington and Rochdale try to make up ground on Torquay. 29 minutes gone and coach Frank Gray mistimes his challenge and leaves the Quakers one short at the back. Steve Ashauna sees the man over and he trundles it past Mark Crudder. It looked as though the journey across the Pennines had taken its toll until the luck of the Irish rebounded on Rochdale. Crudder's long belt downfield is headed on by Keith Welsh and O'Shaughnessy's first time lob catches out the keeper but delights one visitor to the paddock. And Darlington might have just stolen all three points before the end. Steve Martinborough finds Paul Emson and he's only denied by Nicky Holmes on the line. Chief exile in the conference denied Feetham's fans their annual treat of playing host to their great football friends and neighbours, the Hartlepool supporters. Well, normal service resumed yesterday, though the Quakers' eagerness to renew hostilities proved a little premature. 
This was the one the Quakers had to come back for, and they might have returned in triumph if John Borthwick hadn't pulled this early chance wide. But it was to be a story of wasted opportunities. For all Darlington's controlled build-up, Hartlepool's more direct approach looked just as threatening.